Hello guys, welcome back for another game of StarCraft 2. As I promised, I will try to cast a match each and every day. And so far I managed to do it. It's very easy because I do something that I really enjoy. And together with you, I'm seeing for the first time this game. Here we have spawning none other than Skilos with Protoss. And his opponent is well known, is famous. He's Gumiho from Korea. Gumifo, as I already told you in our previous cast with him, he's also known as the Korean mystical nine-tailed fox, whatever that means, but seems very, very cool. Also, he used to play random. I like to play random sometimes as well, but now he switched to full-time Terran. He started in 2010, so that's a long time until 2019, when he had to go to the army. What can you do? But he came back in 2021 and still playing, despite the fact uh, that he lost uh, two years in the army. He's uh, 30 years old and his opponent is way younger. Uh, Skilos is only 21 years old. Uh, Skilos, interesting what I read uh, about him. His name is Nikita. He's from Russia, but due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Skilos does not want to be represented by the Russian flag anymore. And uh, he asked uh, Liquipedia to set him as countryless. So, good for you. It's your opinion. We respect it. And let's hope violence will stop all over the world. No need for this. Violence should be only here in our StarCraft 2 game that we love. Uh, SUV trying to build a command center for the second base. And here we have uh, the second nexus for the Protoss. The probe saw everything. Let's see from this perspective. And now the other perspective. So you see Gumiho does not have too much map awareness. But now with the Reaper on its way, he is going to know more. While uh, because uh, Skilos uh, sent his probe, he has a better understanding of his opponent. And is that poor poor probe uh, researching in order to see what is happening he also now has an adept the adept is going to, to the opposite direction and the adept is going to meet now barely is he going to come back for defense of the home no so free reign for the reaper to try to kill some probes at least this one is dead. Now some time lost timing mind, but it's okay. The big brother, the stalker is here. And this is excellent harassment by uh, Gumiho. Making sure skill is losing uh, a lot of mining time. But while this is happening, the adept is trying to kill a supply depot. That's going to take a while. And in the meantime, two marines are coming. This is why Olof is uh, excellent here, but interesting, an Olof with a command center. First time I'm seeing it. The Adept is trying to shade, to see if he can do something, anything. Obviously he cannot. In the meantime, the Stalker was able to kill uh, the Reaper. And now we have another shading, unsuccessful. Four Marines guarding the gate. And here we have the mule that is uh, trying to take as many minerals as possible. The cyclone is here. And the cyclone is excellent in case you send uh, higher tier units. It can uh, have this ability to lock on target and destroy it. And now an interesting marine drop with uh, the medivac. And in the proximity we have the cyclone. Marine just activated boost. Dropping the marines. Trying to see what he can do. Not that much with two stalkers here. Just trying to divert the attention from the stalkers. I'm going to the main base, but here is another stalker waiting. Nah, Skilos has some skills. I give you that. And the cyclone went back home. Ah, Dark Templar. Skilos is going to use dark magic against uh, Gomiho. Let's see if this is going to work. Nah, impossible. And now probably a scan is going to follow. 
Excellent timing. But orbital is out of energy. This is why he cannot scan. Yeah, now finally the scan. Was it worth it? Mm, not really. For only two workers. Here in terms of the army, we can see a clear advantage for Gumiho. In terms of worker, a clear advantage for Skilos. In terms of income, we are pretty equal. Skilos has a little bit of an advantage in terms of gas and minerals. But nothing uh, that uh, some yours can do. Another Dark Templar. This is why we have uh, this uh, lost mining time. Look at him go. Ooh. And now we have the Raven, so no need for scanning anymore. And is the Terran going to try to push? To see if uh, he can use uh, his army advantage? Gomiho for sure uh, smells that he might have an advantage. And why not? This is a game where you should try to attack your opponent, not to just stay and let your opponent do whatever he wants with his Dark Templars. And now he realized there is something off and he found the pylon. Skilos tried to snipe uh, the Raven. The Raven is circling, making sure the Immortal is useless. The Raven uses an ability that block uh, his opponent. And when probes are being pulled, not a good sign. Look at the probe going. Well, this was a decent attack, not that successful, but decent overall. Now strategic uh, regrouping for Gumiho trying to concentrate his forces but now we have a strong attack from the Protoss with an Archon leading and an Immortal is he going to achieve a lot? not like if here we have the tank you need to respect the tank his splash damage is huge in comparison but nevertheless on the back of it Skilo acquired his third Nexus while the Terran is stuck on only two bases and this one is oversaturated by far and this one uh, <laughs> lacks two workers. They are still fighting with the pylon. Very stubborn pylon. Trying another uh, attack. Ah, Archon drop. So these are going to be just baits. Trying to distract the Terran while the Archons are going to the main mineral line. And here are the Archons. Yes, one one worker? Uh, not that good. Now the income still favors Kilos. Like you have three bases. And now Gumiho is trying to do the exactly same thing. A drop into the main, uh, main uh, Protoss base. Is he going to succeed? Ooh. Let's see together. Here we have Darkons. Guys, you are just chilling here. An attack is coming. Should do something. So a steam to the greedy for base. Trying to kill some of the probes successful. Excellent. Skilo, you need to cancel this. You are going to lose money. Yes, he cancelled in the last moment. And now with four archons. They act like bodyguards of the Nexus. You had to pull all your troops back. Now we have five Archons, an Immortal, Stalkers. Uh, it's a good moment to attack. Go, skill, go. With Medivacs. Are they going to attack or come uh, back home for home defense? What do you have here for defense? Mm, two tanks. Cyclone, not that much. Another medivac with two widomines. If those widomines are successful, yeah. But already here we have stalkers. Yeah. Only one stalker for two widomines drop. 
Uh, this with the Master Coat of Guard, destroyed instantly. Nice wall off. But what do you do as a Terran when you run out of minerals? With no extra base against the four base Protoss? Yeah. Not a situation I would like to be in. And the four base is finished. In terms of workers, 68 versus 59. Not bad, not bad for Skilos. He's young, he's fresh. He smells blood in the water. Yeah, Gomiko just tried to acquire a fourth base. But if Protoss is able to deny it, this drop, it's efficient, not that much. Still, Skilos has more workers. Yeah, destroying a pylon, not a big deal. Now Skilos is threatening this base again. The tanks are being brought here to Widow Mines. And this medivac is intercepted and destroyed. That was a huge loss. This can make the difference. It was full of marines. Now the Protoss is very confident. The army grew bigger and bigger with each minute. Now 93 versus 85. And here we have a lot of marines that are not that beefy when they have to meet an Archon. And what is the saying? When you are ahead, just be more ahead. It's exactly what Skilos is doing. He's having another base. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 versus 2. I don't know, Skilos uh, read the manual, but for Zerg, not for Protoss. And Gomiho is now using mules. Trying his best to catch up, but... Is he going? We also have two Colossus here. Now Protoss is just waiting uh, for the right moment to attack. This is a good army for Gumiho, I give you that. 109 to 108. Almost perfect. Oh, that was excellent. So what just happened, the Ghost was able to use uh, the ability to have an uh, uh, APM that destroyed the shields of uh, the Protoss units. Look at the shield just regenerating. Now it's a game of patience. Who has more patience to wait? Who is going to attack? If Gumiho is attacking, that means his base is exposed. If he stays too much, that means Skilos is going to have way too many minerals. After all, we are talking about 77 workers versus uh, 57. And now this squad is trying to do something to achieve. There aren't that many forces, but let's see. Yeah, this base is dead. Unless there is a recall, all these workers are going to die. Yeah, you came too late to the party. Already this uh, commando squad was uh, pulled down. And while this was happening, we have here a very successful uh, counterattack. With zealots. So non stop action. This is what we like to see. Two pro StarCraft 2 players showing their ability, their skills. Another pylon was spotted. And uh, just one Archon was hit. Look at him changing, glowing into yellow. So this is a good Terran army, 145 over 129. And Gumiho somehow managed to have another base, the fourth one. And it's not the main base that was flown, it's a brand new one, 400 minerals invested. It's very hard to attack the Terran in choke points. With the splash damage of the tank, you can easily lose all your units. Yes, Terran, you immediately go. 
And now this is a big epic battle that we all are waiting for. Nice. Who is going to win? Is it Gumiho? Is Gumiho really going to do it? Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, the Terran did it. The Terran did it. 27 versus 106. 200, 109. But these dead balls of the disruptors are deadly. Is Gumiho really going to do it? He had... Uh, and... Yes, Gumiho was able to do it, so he invested more in the army, less in the workers and somehow he made it uh, like seems very easy, but it wasn't. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. My name is Keanu. See you for the next match.